1720, the plague. 1820, cholera. 1920, Spanish flu. 2020, coronavirus. They've been trying to wipe us out for a long, long time. A picture is worth a thousand words. Someone was at the right place at the right time with a camera. It was reported that President Obama was furious that he was caught on camera and it was published and tried to block it. The name of the book Obama is holding is called The Post-American World and it was written by a fellow Muslim, Farid Zakaria. Post-America means the world after America. If each person sends this to a minimum of 20 people, on their addresses list, in three days all people in the United States of America would have a, the message, I believe this is n one photo that really should be passed around. By the time you turn 30 you should have at least one of the following, a drawer full of random cords, Tupperware with half the lids missing, anxiety, a collection of plastic bags full of other plastic bags. Sleep deprivation. The following are a few excerpts from the, well, from the about electromagnetic. Electromagnetic radio wave and microwave pulse mind warfare was great advantage in that a desired subject or population has no knowledge of the procedure being implemented. Two, mind control chemical and polypharmaceutical saturation has been achieved over the past 20 years of implementation with this purpose in mind and is achieved by deliberate over introduction through exposure or consumption of on behalf of the population based in everyday usage of, <coughs> of <poly> <coughs> public water supplies airborne pollutants and chemical agents in a wide variety of foodstuffs aspartame for one. All right at the back. The lube. Says it all really. Schofield's wife comes to terms with shock announcement, except it wasn't a shock. This, who he works with, and he would rather have a cock up his arse. Schofield met McGreevy when he was 10. He followed him on Twitter a few years later. Schofield was patron of the acting academy McGreevy attended. It is claimed McGreevy became Schofield's assistant. McGreevy quits is sacked. Day later, Schofield comes out. There's always more to every story than what we're told by lamestream. <clears throat> Warning to Facebook users. Keep an eye out for a scam which messages you using an account used previously by a friend in your Facebook friends list. It will attempt to add you again and then ask how you are and then continue to offer you ways to get more money from tax courts, benefit system, claims and even pensions and so on. It will then send you a link to another account where this person can help you. When you check that account, it's only one photo, no information of the account, and the one I had cont contained a photo of a man with a US flag behind him, so I was able to quickly spot the hoax. It's definitely a scam. Just to be careful, the messages are designed to reply in certain ways to make you think it's believable. I have blocked the two accounts that contacted me. It's a new scam as far as I know, so keep um, peeled. Never self check out. It's not convenient for me to help corporations fire workers so they raise their profits. I stand in line and when the lines back up the store calls more cashiers to the front. If we keep doing it they'll need to hire more people. Never self check out. You are not a store employee. Stop being one for free. <clears throat> Bristol declares ecological emergency over loss of wildlife. 
may cause for urgent response to declining birds, bees and mammals such as hedgehogs. <coughs> the local decline of many birds, insects and some mammals has prompted Bristol to declare an ecological emergency. The Mayor, Marvin Rees, and leaders from local organisations and attractions met on a hill in the city of on Tuesday to make the declaration. The city council said some bird species such as swifts and starlings had almost entirely vanished from Bristol, as in many cities and towns across the UK. There have been worrying losses of bees and other insects as well as mammals including hedgehogs and bats. Two years ago, Bristol became the UK the first UK authority to declare a climate emergency. Over the next few months, a plan will be de developed to tackle the ecological emergency. And the hope is that the eye-catching announcement will prompt organisations to take action. Rees said, it is not too late to start the recovery of our wildlife. We must work together to grasp this last chance and put things right for nature and wildlife in our city. This declaration will provide a focus for a whole city to come together and take positive action. Our commitment to this will extend beyond parks and green spaces. We need our building streets and open spaces to support wildlife and create a more natural friendly city. And we need new developments to do the same. Priorities will include looking at mayor to prevent wildlife habitats from being destroyed and creating and caring for wildlife rich spaces in every part of the city. Organisations represented by the declaration included a hospital trust, an NHS commissioned commissioning group, a university, Bristol Zoo, the Science and Arts Centre, We the Curious and the SS Great Britain. Ian Barrett, the chief executive of Avon Wildlife Trust, said the climate and ecological emergency were being felt everywhere. We can't wait for national government or international bodies to lead the way. We have to show that through collective action, we can make Bristol a city where wildlife can thrive and the natural world can flourish. He said, this is about stopping the loss forever of much loved species, which were once common in gardens, parks, waterside, and green spaces across the city. Swifts, starlings, hedgehogs and butterflies. Hmm, I wonder what's causing the decline then? Like we don't know. <clears throat> Prince Andrew promoted to Seaman Staines. The Duke of York has been promoted to Seaman Staines to mark the occasion of his 60th birthday, it has emerged. Buckingham Palace confirmed the honour a slightly lower promotion than expected owing to recent events. Royal sh spokesperson Laurie Fisher, 34, explained convention suggested Prince Andrew would be made an Admiral of the Royal Navy when he turned 60. <clears throat> While he is currently unemployed, however, and facing somewhat lurid accusations, he has agreed to a less controversial appointment. Unemployed, eh? Benefit cheat, eh? Seaman Staines has been a noble position in the Royal Navy alongside Roger the Cabin Boy and Master Bates for generations. Captain Pugwash is part of Britain's military fabric, after all. Fluoride in your toothpaste is a neurotoxin poisonous to the tissue in the brain, spinal cord and nervous system. For years now, it has been ingrained in our mindset that fluoride is a very important ingredient for healthy teeth but what if everything you knew about something was wrong how did such a toxic byproduct of the fertilizer industry turn into a glorified health benefit in fact it's been called the scam of the century and i agree while pharmaceutical grade fluoride is also a toxic drug, this is not the type of fluoride being added to drinking water and your toothpaste. The fluoride that is typically used in your water and toothpaste is a co contaminated chemical byproduct that comes from the phosphorus fertilizer manufacturing process. But you've been told it's good for it's healthy teeth. That's why it gives you healthy teeth. It's a lie. It always has been like everything we've ever been told. District Council proposes to increase council tax despite manifesto pledge. What? You mean councils are lying bastards just like the parliamentarians? Well, 
I'm not shocked in the slightest. Despite a manifesto pledge to keep council tax below the average increase in local earnings, Huntingdon District Council is proposing to increase council tax while some data shows wages fell. A report sent to the Council Overview and Scrutiny Committee said that wages in Huntingdonshire fell by 0.3% between July 18 and 19, but rose by 3.5% across Cambridgeshire as a whole. The Executive Councillor for Resources, Conservative Councillor Jonathan Gray, said he would use the countrywide figure as a metric to determine council tax because Huntingdonshire's small data size affected its accuracy. Had he used the figures for Huntingdonshire, he accepted the council would not have been able to raise the council tax figure by as much as the, his party is suggesting. The 0.3% average wage growth figure did not appear in the council's official budget report considered by the cabinet on Thursday, January 23rd. <clears throat> A week after the overview and scrutiny committee, the Huntingdonshire Conservative previously pledged in their manifesto any council tax increase will be lower than both the most recent state pension increase and the average increase in local earnings. <coughs> you mean they've lied again? But you keep voting! The council tax proposed agreed at the, by the Conservative Authority Cabinet on, unanimously on Thursday would see its share of the council tax rise by 2.6%, the same as last year. If the charge is approved at a session of the full council next month, it will see Bandy council tax owed to the district increase by £3.70 to £145.86. Councillor Gray told the Cabinet he was advised not to use the Huntingdonshire wage figures because there is too wide a coefficient variation. What that's really saying is... It's quite a small number, quite a small sample, and the difference between people who are not earning very much money and people who are earning quite a lot of money is quite a wide variance. And so the average numbers, if they need to be treated with caution. The Cambridgeshire sample, being a much larger sample, is a number that we are, were recognising when we set out th this out, he said. He suggested the council may have to re-examine the benchmark because the state pension rise in April of this year is 3.9%. Pensioners are going to be very well looked after and there is a chance, a strong chance, I think, that the state pension will accurately, actually be higher than local wages when he comes to the look at 2020 bullshit banks set to remain exempt from tax so yeah although you know you you're earning your a couple of hundred pounds a week or whatever pay tax <coughs> banks who steal billions each year pay nothing no surprise though is it Banks are likely to be allowed to continue to pay zero tax on billion euro profits following a Department of Finance review of ex exceptions for lenders and other corporations because the banks run the government. The government do as the banks say or they get no money. Simple. <coughs> Finance Minister Pasquale Donoghue will present a review of corporation tax to an oligarchal committee next month. This will highlight the co continuation of the current bank levy as opposed to changes to the tax exemption. The bank levy yields 150 million annually. However, opposition TDs want the tax exemption, which allows banks write off taxes against past losses scrapped. This is despite many banks having returned to huge profit. Last year, Bank of Ireland, AIB and P PTSB made combined profits of 2.5 billion euros. However, they paid no tax. In 2015, the government changed the rules allowing banks to defer taxes for up to 20 years. You try deferring taxes, see what happens. Child abuser will be publicly hanged in Pakistan under new plans agreed by Parliament. That's what we should be doing. <coughs> Non-binding resolution follows high-profile child sex abuse cases in Pakistan. Pakistan has the death penalty, but all exceptions are carried out until inside jail. The resolution was overwhelmingly supported by Parliament, but, but will not be automatically passed into law. 
Pakistan's parliament passed a resolution Friday calling for the public hanging of convicted child killers and rapists. The non-binding resolution follows a spate of high-profile child sex abuse cases that has provoked outrage and riots across Pakistan in recent years. Child killers and rapists should not only be given the death penalty by hanging, but they should be hanged publicly, said Ali Mohammed Khan, Pakistan's Parliamentary Affairs Minister, who presented the resolution in the National Assembly or Lower House. Yet over here, they walk free. revealed how drug giants can access your health records. The Department of Health and Social Care has been selling the medical data of millions of NHS patients to American and other international drugs companies, having misled the public into believing the information would be anonymous, according to leading experts in the field. Senior NHS figures have told the observer that patient data compiled from GP surgeries and hospitals and then sold for huge sums for research can routinely be linked back to individual patients' medical records via the GP surgeries. They say there is a clear evidence this is already being done by companies and organisations that have brought data from the DHSC, having identified individuals whose medical histories are of particular interest. Concerns that the data is not truly anonymous have been raised by the senior NHS officials who believe the public are not being told the truth. Well, there's a shock. But the DHSC insists it only sells on information after thorough measures have been taken to ensure the complete anonymity and confidentiality of patients' personal information. More lies. In December, the Observer revealed that the government had raised £10 million in 2018 by granting licence to com commercial and academic organisations across the world that wanted access to so-called anonymised data. If patients do not want their data to be used for research, they have to actively opt out. The system at their GP surgery. Boris Johnson to seize control over NHS with new law. Ministers want new powers to instruct health bosses to force pace of change amid fears that private sector involvement could be expanded across health services. That's what the plan of this is all about. <clears throat> Boris Johnson is planning to use new health legislation to impose ministerial control over the NHS. A bill to be introduced this year will contain new powers for ministers, including Mr Johnson, to issue instructions to NHS England Chief Executive Sir Simon Stevens. The move, which is understood to have been developed over the past year by the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, treasonous traitor that he is, is likely to raise concerns that Conservative ministers could seek to use new powers to extend private sector involvement in the NHS. Under the current terms, Sir Simon's position is optionally independent. But the Prime Minister is said to be concerned that this arrangement makes it difficult for Downing Street to force through changes to the system. In other words, to force through privatisation. Well done for anyone that voted Conservative. NHS England was created in 2013 under the then Health Secretary Andrew Lansley as part of a widely criticised shake-up that controversially introduced an internal market system. Stevens wants to develop an integrated care system across England with a, the ability to play, plan collectively. Pedophile sneered in online video seen by thousands of people walks free after arguing there were no real victims. He sent sexually explicit pictures to what he thought was a 14-year-old girl. A predatory paedophile caught trying to groom girls on Facebook has walked free from court after arguing there were no real victims of his offence. Convicted sex offender Lee Parry, 37, was exposed by paedophile hunters after he repeatedly sent naked photographic pictures of himself to an investigator posing as a 14-year-old girl. During months of exchanges, Parry asked if he could take the girl out for a milkshake told her she was cute, sexy, and he wanted to be the, her first, and added, I will be a dirty bastard. 
Later, when confronted at his home by members of the Catching Online pre uh, Predators group, Parry, who had been convicted of molesting a 15-year-old girl in the, uh, his teens, began scuffling with the investigators and embarked on a foul-mouthed rant at them as his citizen's arrest was live-streamed on the social media site. And he walked because the judicial system is perverted. Leaked list of Conservative Party sex pest sleaze published, shaming 36 current Tory MPs. Conser Conservative Party secretaries, researchers and aides have compiled a list of 36 Tory MPs' inappropriate sexual behaviour and unwanted advances. As senior Conservative figures have been furiously brie briefing the downplay sexual allegations against Tory MPs, furious Westminster workers have been compiling proof that 11% of the party's MPs have been abusing their positions too. Conservative Party secretaries, researchers and aides have compiled a list of those six Tory MPs' inappropriate sexual behaviour and unwanted advances. As senior Conservative figures have been furiously briefing to downplay sexual allegations against Tory MPs, furious Westminster workers have been compiling proof that 11% of all the MPs, parties, MPs have been abusing their position to harass female and male employees. Female Westminster workers have been circulating a dirty dossier which now comprises inappropriate behaviour by 36 sitting Tory MPs, including a minister who is... Hansy with women at parties, a backbencher who paid a woman to be quiet and an MP who is perpetually intoxicated and very inappropriate with women. The list was leaked to Guido Fawkes, Westminster blog, who published what they insist is the full spreadsheet that has been passed around the aggrieved Westminster researchers. The right-wing politician's website says this incl list includes two serving cabinet ministers accused of inappropriate behaviour towards women, 18 serving ministers accused of behaviour forms of inappropriate sexual behaviour, 12 MPs who are said to have been inappropriate towards female researchers, four MPs who are alleged to have been inappropriately towards male researchers. <coughs> Some of the allegations have already emerged, such as International Trade Minister Mark Garnier referring to his secretary as sugar tits and admitting making her purchase sex toys for him, or avoid Christian Stephen Crabb, who ran the leadership to the talk party six sexting a 19-year-old who was interviewed for a job with him. But the sheer amount of alleged sex pest on the dirty dossier suggests a culture among many Tory MPs of sexual harassment of junior staff with impunity. There has not been a single new prescription issued by the NHS for the kind of medical cannabis that transforms lives of our children. Not one. Someone told me that cannabis is legal in Canada. I don't like the stuff myself. One Canadian month later. And how would he know he didn't like it unless he tried it? The scum. <clears throat> Two docs in UK, virus toll. Yeah, they're pushing that. I told you what the plan is with that. Exclusive, Peter Phillips heartache. Queen hit by royal split. Grandson's wife tells him marriage over. She could be go to Canada like Megan. <coughs> that scum paper. I counting the cost of storm Carrera. Out outrage at failure of flood effect defences. Race defined patients who saw virus doctors. Surgery closed as emergency powers are introduced. And next it's going to be martial law and forced vaccinations. That's where they're trying to take this. You mark my words. Billions to be spent on buses and bike routes. Oh, more waste of money. PM will unveil five billion package to overhaul local transport under plan to level up infrastructure and help communities in North and Midlands. Well, how about, rather than wasting money on that shit, homing the homeless and feeding the hungry? Oh, no, that's not part of your Zionist plan at all, is it? <clears throat> 
cheaper bus services and hundreds of miles of cycleways to be promote, promised. Labour dismissed funding for five years package as poultry. HS2 green light, PM ex expected to signal approval today. Historical night, the patting on the back of all those that's distracted the masses. Express. Spread of virus, imminent threat. Yes, because you're spreading it so that you can bring in martial law and false vaccinations. You think we're that stupid, we can't see through your plan. Wrong again. <coughs> Queen Shoka's grandson Peter splits from his wife. 4,000 new buses to get Britain moving. And they pat yourself on the back for distracting the masses. Shit. The Guardian. Rebecca Front, I'd love to do Shakespeare or play James Bond. OK. Johnson pledges £5 billion overall to bus service to fend off HS2. Utter waste of money. HS2 has been appallingly managed by the Conservative Party, which has failed to de deliver a single project on time. Girls start puberty at a year earlier than in the 70s. That's because of all the hormones in the food and everything these days. Parasite makes history with Best Film Oscar. Telegraph. Please can force virus carriers into quarantine. And next it'll be forced vaccinations. Can you see where the leading is? Unprecedented powers granted as outbreak is labelled a serious and imminent threat because we're spreading it. PM pledges five billion for better bus services. Judge a degree by well-being, not salary. Drivers for digital dev device to detect Alzheimer's. Benefit payments brought bomb parts. Defences will not stop flood, expert warns. Sinn Féin leader confident of victory. Daily fail. Queen's grandson Peter Phillips splits from wife. Virus hits eight in Britain, including two GPs. Frantic hunt for patient as health experts may fear major UK outbreak. How many more are infected? We better bring in martial law and have some forced vaccinations then, hadn't we? The Times. Johnson unveils one billion a year boost for regional bus services. Bid to trace patients as co coronavirus infects GPs. Two doctors among eight Britons affected. But colloidal silver, um, argon oil, ar ar argon oil, um, coconut oil. You know, there's loads of things that will wipe it out. But they want you in fear to keep control of you. And so you, you won't protest when they bring in martial law and forced vaccinations. Of course, the vaccinations will have the coronavirus in so you will be killed at the same time and let's not forget this is not normal coronavirus this has been weaponized because it's got the aids virus mixed in with it this is a biological weapon and we are the targets drones hunt me as i flee front line of libyan war mirror killer flu virus hits gp surgery Strictly Kelvin's wife. I trust him, but he's made a fool out of me. Storms. Kyra? Sierra? I don't know. Chaos. Sold down the river. Fury of flood victims betrayed again by Tories. Broken promises to the north. Utter waste of paper. Wife, knife, Kelv, silent treatment. We'll lock up virus victims. Oh, sounds like a. Military uh, martial law, that does, doesn't it? Doctor Who, I want to, to die. Brexit, cross blame EU exit for a plunge in foreign pooches. Financial Times. Merkel here walks away. Javid pushes for decade long deal granting city access to EU market. Negotiating stance revealed in briefing paper. Note acknowledges success not assured coronavirus fears prompt big group to hang up on mobile world congress and finally my wife is my strength all the other women are my weakness always check your mirrors 
F off, F you, F this, F that, F it, F him, F her, F him. Irritable owl syndrome. In the UK, we used to drive on the left of the road. Now we drive on what's left of the road. Please, no more, I can't take this anymore. Shut up and take it all in, you whore. I'm probably going to hell for this. Guide dog for a Muslim woman. It's called a barker. That awkward moment when the nurse is examining your testicles and she asks you to stop running your fingers through her hair. <laughs> 